welcome to a very special edition of the PHNX Coyotes podcast. Today, we are talking about the Arizona High School Hockey Championship, the State D1 Championship, headed to Mullet Arena this Saturday, February 4th at 7 p.m. with Desert Vista Thunder versus the Notre Dame Saints. Super excited about this one. High school hockey is going to mullet. I tell you what, because my son, I have a different, unique perspective on high school hockey. My son went through it and played it with the Pinnacle Pioneers. And just to see how this has evolved in Arizona um, and how important it's become, having this event in the mullet it, it just shows how far this sport has come in this state and how important high school hockey has become here. I would still love, and I've, I've written about this in the past, way back in the day when I was covering preps, about the possibility of the AIA, the Arizona Interscholastic Association, sanctioning this. Of course, cost is a major issue here for the AIA, but I would love to see it sanctioned someday because it gives it sort of that street cred that I think it deserves now. I think there are enough teams playing where it could be an AIA sport. Um, and then what happens when, when it becomes AIA sanctioned, it gets more coverage, media yeah. coverage. Like you look at AZ Central, they don't cover this now because it's a club sport. But, you know, that's why we're here. It's getting there, and, and I will. I, it's time for me to flex. I'm putting in my high school flex because I was a member of the oh. coaching staff <laughs> oh of the Pinnacle Pioneers, God. and I have an Ooh, Arizona Blair. State High School Hockey Championship ring, literally with my name on it from 2017. <laughs> my son Jackson, captain, shout out. Um, this is a big deal to these kids, and we'll get a close up of this ring because it. I can't wear it because my hand would hurt. It's massive. <laughs> this is a big deal to these kids. Um, I played in Minnesota. I know what that high school mm. hockey is about, and I think for these kids, and I've played on, I played in college and other things, but I always go back to high school when I got to wear my school's name across my chest. How much more important that was to me as I look back over my hockey career. That was it. That was the big deal. My my classmates were there. My friends were there. That's what made this a big deal, playing in high school. And I'm glad that finally they're getting some recognition. And I think, honestly, this is the first step at the mullet. I remember I, I played in Illinois. I never played high school because, uh, excuse me, I, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I played in prep school. Bougie Craig yeah, that's right. But the New England prep school champions was <laughs> a really cool thing. In fact, they were hosted at my school, Phillips Exeter, for a long time because it had two rings. So you could run games simultaneously. And they were, that was a really cool event. Players that played in in that arena in that format include Jeremy Roenick, by the way. Who? Yeah, you exactly. might have heard of him. Might but Illinois him. had high school state championships too. And I remember when I was younger, we would go to those. There were the powers were the Catholic schools like Saint Viator or Mount Carmel or Brother Rice. But it was it was a blast to go to those games. The crowds were nuts. The crowds were raucous because you get the students involved, high school students at this tournament. So it was a really cool event. It's just so cool how much. High school hockey has grown in Arizona, mm -hmm. even since I was in high school. And a quick little aside, when I got into journalism because nobody at my high school barely even knew we had a hockey team. I went to Horizon and I walked into my high school magazine and said, I want to write an article about the Horizon hockey team. And that was the first article I ever wrote wow. in my life. <laughs> and um, I'm still friends with some people who are on Horizon hockey. They've also won state championship so go huskies <laughs> just a side note um but it's just it's just really cool to see how much it's grown and like you said i think this is a great step in the right direction so looking forward to saturday like we said but you had the chance to sit down with the president and director of hockey for asha kenny mcginley yesterday so let's hear from kenny so kenny a lot of people don't know about high school hockey um can you kind of give us the lay of the land how many teams are playing, how many kids play high school hockey, and just give us an idea of what's going on with high school in Arizona. For sure. I mean, I think a lot of people know about high school hockey, but they don't know about high school hockey in Arizona. Right. Uh, this year we have 40 teams across Flagstaff, Phoenix, and all the way down to Tucson with 770 players playing. Um, it's the largest we've ever had here in the Arizona community. Uh, it's our 24th year wow. as, as a league. Um, and by far our best. What high school did you go to? I went to Horizon. Horizon. I got a question, because I think Leah went to Horizon too, so we'll have to talk to Leah about that. I've been around high school hockey for a long time, and I've seen the game grow from its infancy to what it is now. How did we get here? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, I think a lot of the credit needs to be paid to ASU Athletics, Greg Powers, Ray Anderson, Frank Ferrara, to create this environment that we're currently sitting in. Um, certainly high school hockey had nothing to do with that. That was all ASU, NCAA, and the work that they've done, uh, which is just a testament to the growth overall of the sport in Arizona. 
Um, we're the benefactor of all that hard work that the Coyotes have done at their grassroots over the years. Um, that ASU has done, you know, building this facility. And we've just been fortunate enough to be able to, to host our main event here you know, this coming Saturday. Well, I'm excited about the mullet, and I'm excited about seeing high school hockey at the mullet. What can fans, especially fans that haven't been to this building, what can they expect out of high school hockey this weekend on Saturday? I mean, I hope this is going to be one of the most electric atmospheres of any hockey game that we've seen in Arizona. Most hockey games that are played in Arizona are hopefully a one-sided fan affair. Sure. When ASU plays their games here, it's ASU fans and maybe a sprinkle of Minnesota or Boston College fans. Um, when the Coyotes play here, we hope for the same thing. With a high school sporting event, it's more similar to a college football bowl game. There's hopefully going to be a competing interest in, in rooting for the two different teams, uh, which raises the excitement level. It rages, raises the electricity in the building, and that's what high school sports are all about and championships are all about. This is a small detail, but for especially for people who haven't been here, and, I, and we talk about price points of getting into this building, if you want to see the mullet, this is a great opportunity to do that. But... Is everything going to be open? Is this like a regular game at the mullet? We're full tilt here. We're, uh, we have all the concessions open. Fans will be able to eat, drink, um, even adult beverages. Uh, it's all general admission seating, so you can sit on the glass for $15 if you get here early enough. Um, the student sections will be located behind the nets. Everything else, center ice, open seating. We're selling suites even. Um, we're selling loge boxes. It's, it's the full building experience at mullet like you said, for a much cheaper price point than you can experience otherwise. Well, I'm from the state of Minnesota, which a lot of people that watch our show know, yeah. talk about all the time. I was lucky enough to play in the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Yeah. It's legendary. It's an event. Do you ever see a place in the future where this is a tournament-like atmosphere, where we're playing three, four days with all of the classes here at Mullet? I mean, that's the dream scenario. We, we looked at it this year due to scheduling conflicts between you know the Coyotes being a tenant in this building and ASU's heavy home game loaded schedule. Wasn't possible this year. I think baby steps, one game at a time. Uh, would love to have like hockey day-like atmospheres here uh, modeled after obviously the bigger states um, just so people can appreciate the sport for what it is and, and high school sports for what they are. Well, I can speak for myself and my son who went through this high school program. I want to thank you for me helping make this happen. Um, you work really hard and, and I want to thank you for your time today because I know you're extremely busy. Wish you the best of luck uh, for the game on Thanks, Saturday. Thanks, We appreciate all of PHNX support. Um, we're happy to have you guys here and we hope it's a good game. See you Saturday. I tell you what, the growth of this sport, a lot of that has to go to Kenny. He works tirelessly to make this happen. I will say this, that trophy is it, sick. It's better than some of the like major trophies in the major sports. It's a mini say, like, a it's a mini cup. And I, what's really cool and what makes the Stanley Cup cool, it makes this cool. The kids' names are on the trophy. And they it goes back and shows the history of this sport. So and you can cool. always go back and go, hey, my, my name is on that cup. I think it's a really cool deal. Now that we have the mullet, now that we have the space and the arena to have an event like this, in Minnesota, this is a four-day event. And there are four classes of high school hockey in Arizona. And I think with the mullet, having two sheets of ice, I think you could make this a statewide event. Tucson, Flagstaff, make it a, a big deal. PD, are they going to be able to fill up the mullet? What's your sense of that? I, I You know what? I hope so. This yeah. is year one. And you know, when you have the first yep. year in event, sure. you got to start somewhere and you got to have baby steps. The one thing I know will happen here and, and, and talking to Ken, Kenny is, is how they've split up the arena. The Notre Dame kids and the cheerleaders are going to be up this side and the desert Vista cheerleaders. And it's going to be a, behind the opposing goaltender for two <laughs> oh, periods. So the student sections bands? are going to be, they're going to be bands there. I'm we're, I, we're working on the music. Gotta still, have bands, the bands. Have bands. But, but the atmosphere is going to be electric for the kids and, yeah. the, and the students, I'm hoping they get there. And, and I think that's part of what we do because Mullet Arena is a, is a great place to see a building or a building to see a hockey game in. And, and there are people that can't get to the Coyotes. You know, the price point is too much. And you, the ASU might not be convenient. You want to go to this game? It's 15 bucks and it's general seating. You want to sit on the glass? Just get there first. You, like, awesome. you can be yeah. red line at the Mullet.
for we've 15 talked bucks. a lot about the growth of hockey. You mentioned this earlier, Leah, and we, we've talked about the youth level and you can look at USA Hockey's numbers. Arizona is only always one of the fastest growing states in the country. We've got players. We're producing players for the NHL now. We're sending players to juniors. We had Lindsey Fry on talking about the growth of the Kachinas. Their program's going tier one now. ASU comes online as a division one school. We have the Coyotes, of course, in the NHL who started all this. This is the last piece. This yeah. is the missing piece, yeah. and it's nice to see it start a, sort of filling in those cracks now and coming along. Absolutely. So excited to see this one. We got Notre Dame. They're ranked number one in the state, 16-1-3. Um, and three. So I guess if you're heavy <laughs> favorites, if you will. Um, so let's hear from Notre Dame head coach Charles Missio. Coach Missio, this is the third straight championship game for your Notre Dame Saints. What does this mean to your team? And more importantly, what does it mean to this program at Notre Dame? Why we're here for the third time, I, I, I truly believe it's it's a group of young men that are just dedicated and committed to, to the cause. And we have this incredible tradition that just started with Mark Siaccio, then went to Joe Dusbadic, and now it's myself and, and my partners at Notre Dame, and we've just continued that tradition. You look at the semifinal game, um, mm -hmm. and you, five minutes ago, you were down 2 nothing in that game. Yeah. What is it about this Notre Dame team that doesn't quit? Where does that come from? As soon as we got that first one, it was game on. There was blood in the water. Uh, I give Bash Perry, Bash's team incredible kudos. I mean, their goaltending was fantastic. They played nearly the perfect game. They stayed out of the box. Basha took something away from us that is so special to us, and that's our power play. And we work our power play, and we love our power play. And we're very successful in our power play. And Basha, Basha kept that off the ice. What do you look at? You look at the regular season for this Notre Dame squad. Can't put it any other way that but you dominated. You had one regulation loss in the entire regular season. How as a coach do you prepare your club from being too overconfident in a game where you're facing off against the number five team in the state? Basha, uh, I don't think we took them lightly. I give credit to Basha. Basha, I mean, I'm not making a statement that our team isn't strong enough. Basha just played a very good game. They played, they were very chaotic um, in, in some of the, in their approach. Uh, their forecheck was good. They, they, they knocked us off pucks. They did some things that our skilled guys don't like to have to you know, encounter. You played this Desert Vista team in the semifinals last season. Yep. And it was a tight one. It was 0-0 into the third period. Fantastic. And game. an unbelievable goal wins the game yep. for, for your club, and you win one nothing. Is there a rivalry starting to brew with this Desert Vista team? Uh, DV... You know, and, and, and it's been, we've, we've already had the discussion and we will, we'll continue to have a discussion this week about DV. We have to remember, we had a goalie last year, Ethan, that played the best game maybe of his entire career against DV. He made 40 saves, 42 saves. Uh, we kept Kelton in bad ice. We made Kelton shoot from, from tough spots, uh, which made it easier for our goaltending. And I think there's a lot of respect right now. Uh, guys, you know, we look at DV. When DV has their squad is in town and they're ready to play, they are deep. They are, you know, three, they, I mean, they can throw three, four solid lines at you and they can keep coming. So I think, I think we're in store for a much different game than we're used to. I will say this, though. When skill plays skill and DV has a lot of skill players, I think the game's a bit different. And I think we really accelerate. In that, you know, because our skill players can really step up. I look at the, the players coming into the building today for their practice day and eyeing mullet for the first time and getting close to that ice. As a coach, how do you temper that and balance that excitement and that energy of being in this fantastic building and playing a hockey game and sticking with a game plan? I mean, I'd, I'd have I'd have to say that I've got to hamper the I've got to keep the kids in check. Um, you know, we're in North Scottsdale, so coming down here once is is good we get a taste of it i like that asha set us up and get the field bounces and what 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 it sounds like as we skate and what the what the ice feels like um but i have to keep these guys a bit confined to the hype uh, they're gonna do a pep rally on friday um but after that it's almost like uh, the scene at hoosiers that you know gene hackman comes in and measures measures the net and goes what is it it's 10 feet you know what's baseline to baseline it's it's a hockey rink now we are benefit, maybe slight advantage, Notre Dame. We've played in some big games. Uh, we have that experience. And um, a lot of teams don't. So we thought, you know, that if we, if we can keep the guys in check until game time and then let them kind of 
roll into the into this the surroundings, I think we should be okay. Well, we've talked about your players a lot, and I know this Notre Dame team plays as one, and this is about a team. Yep. And I wish we could talk about every player. We can't. Yep. So, can you give us an idea of some of the players on Saturday that we need to look for that could really change the tide of this sure. game? Sure. I mean, you can start from net out. I mean, it, you know, my I'm all about you win defensively. Um, Matthew is just an incredible athlete. He's a phenomenal young man. He is so focused. We have not seen Matthew's game this year. I mean, Matthew's had some, some nice wins, but we have not seen Matthew's big game, and we know he's due, uh, and he knows he's due. Um, so watch for, you know, Matthew to just be the man. Uh, you know, as you, as you could, you know, we have defensemen that are very stingy. If we can temper them from having to feel like they have to carry the team and start rushing pucks, uh, we're in a good spot. Uh, up, up the middle, uh, I mean, you can look at our captains, Cobley and, and Whitey, who are both seniors, co-captains. Uh, they're great leaders. So as we run up the middle, you've got to look at Gramlich, you know, his speed, his agility, everything that he can do, his smarts on the ice. Connor Perdue's an absolute grinder. I, I, I think that kid could skate an entire game. If we said you need to play the entire game, I think Connor Perdue would play the entire game. And he'd play any position that we asked him to play. Um, uh, guys that you, you, you may not see as much, you know, that may not get the highlight reel, but, you know, Sully is a big body, and we can get, if we get Sully in his game, in his mindset, uh, watch out. I mean, that's, when, when, he plays, when he plays the way we have asked him to play, he's been sensational. Uh, Drew Jaswin, maybe the fastest north, one of the fastest north-south skaters in the, in the league, and he's crafty, and he's hungry, and uh, he's quiet as can be. He leads by example. Uh, he's, he's fantastic. And how do you not look at Tyler Posh? Mm -hmm. Tyler Posh has the snipe. I mean, the kid shoots the puck like no one shoots the puck. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I remember a high school hockey player that shoots the puck like Tyler Posh. The one thing about Charles is, is he's been there before. And this team has been there. This is their third straight um, championship game. They won two years ago. Pinnacle won last year. But this team is experienced. The program's experienced. Um, they, they are going to be the favorites because they've only lost one game, but they'll have their hands full. I mean, this Desert Vista team has come on strong, and I tell you what, this is going to be a really evenly matched good hockey game. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, don't count Desert Vista out because they come into this ranked fifth but they've won nine straight, including a huge semifinal win against defending state champion Hinnacle. Mm. Um, so, I mean, this is going to be quite the matchup. So I think we should hear from Desert Vista head coach Mark Moynihan. Okay, coach. This is the first time Desert Vista has been in the state championship game since 2015 and 2016 when they were in a back-to-back. -back. What does this mean to the kids and the program of Desert Vista? Well, it means a lot. They've been working really hard. Uh, we've got three kids that have been on the D1 program for all four years so this is a culmination of their hard work and the new guys coming up building them up and then hopefully building our program so we can continue that that uh, uh, like the other top programs here getting into this top spot on a regular basis. You look at this season for your team and it's been a tale of two seasons really you finished yes. fifth in the league you get seven losses but now you've We've torn off nine straight, including a big win over defending state champion, the Pinnacle Pioneers. What's clicking and what's working right now for this Desert Vista club? Right now, we've got all our players back. We've got everybody, all our goalies, players back, uh, the travel players. So you're right. It's been the tale of two, two teams, and having them back has really solidified how we're playing at this point. So we can have our normal lines the way we've been doing it in the beginning of the season so it's been nice you're playing one of arizona's powerhouse teams in the yes. notre dame prep saints how do you prepare this team for a game against such a big program for this game on saturday well we start immediately just talking about how we play as a team right we want to make sure we look at who their top lines are make sure we're matching our top lines to their top lines and then focusing on what they do and how we can neutralize their play so that's what we're looking to accomplish. So, Coach, you've, you've walked in the mullet. I've seen your, your players are up against the glass, kind of taking it all in. Yep. Have you thought about what it's going to be like standing behind that bench on Saturday and what it's going to mean for you to coach these kids in this environment? Absolutely. So when uh, ASU had their home open against Cornell, I was here, and I took pictures, and I sent it to the boys, letting them know, state championships here boys this is what we're working for so i imagined it back then what it would be like 
how it'd be on the bench, talking to the guys, getting them ready. So I've imagined this from uh, months ago. We've had this on our on our radar from day one. That's awesome. And I want to. I, I wish we had the time to talk about every player in the program. Yep. I really do, but we don't. So can you give some of the people listening today an idea of some of the players to look for on Saturday that are going to be key players for you in the game? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to look for Ryan Jim, Danny O'Reilly, Kelton Chadwick. Those are our three players right there um, that bring a ton of experience. Uh, Ryan Jim's coming off six goals in the last two games. He's playing really strong at this time. So those are the players that would be uh, our top ones that we're, we have right now. Coach, I just want to say thank you and soak it all in, and good luck on the game on Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Well, it's good to hear from, from Coach Moynihan that this team, I tell you what, they've got some players that can absolutely turn the game around. This Jim kid, last name is Jim, he's got seven goals in the playoffs. He's got four goals against Pinnacle in the semifinals. <laughs> Keep your eye on him. I mean, he, he can carry this team on, on his back by himself. I've seen the, some of the tournament games, but I haven't watched enough high school hockey to get a perspective on really what to look for in this matchup. I think we need to turn it to a guy I got to talk to. He's the voice of Asha, and that's Dylan Pescator, and, and he's the guy that can really break this game down for us. Here with Dylan Pescator, the voice of Arizona high school hockey. Dylan, how many games did you call this year? This year, 12 to 13, about every weekend, sometimes two a weekend, and then last weekend, because of the quarters and semis, we did five games in two days. So if you if you want to catch up, all of those games from the semifinals and quarterfinals are all on the Asha YouTube channel. Dylan calls one heck of a game. Dylan, I'm going to ask you, what can fans expect out of this game on Saturday? Well, last year we had our championship at Oceanside, and it was 900 people, and it was still one of the loudest games I've ever been to. Now we have two of the bigger programs in Arizona, Notre Dame and Desert Vista. I'm expecting, as Kenny said, one of the loudest games, the just pure emotion and pure feeling from each fan. You go to a Coyotes fan game, you go to an ASU game, there are some suits over there. This is going to be fan, everyone cheering on their side, loud and proud. It's going to be amazing. From the hockey side, because you've seen both of these teams play, you saw them and you called the games through the playoffs. What can you expect from the hockey side? Is this an evenly matched game? Absolutely. Um, each team has been playing their best hockey as we got into playoffs. Notre Dame it took a little time to turn it up in the corners, in the quarters against Centennial, 11 seed. They were losing through 39 minutes, through almost the second period, down 1-0. They turned it on. They had an incredible third period. Their best game was probably yesterday, uh, or uh, Sunday it was, against Bash in the semis. And it wasn't even in the first 45 minutes. It was in the last five where they're down 2-0, uh, freshman Justin Kaplan scores, they tie it up with Jasmine with 1.15 to go, and then Tyler Posh, the senior, finishes it off. Both, And then Desert Vista on their side, nine straight wins. They come in with six straight in the regular season. Then, of course, in the play-in, they beat Brophy. Quarters, they beat their rival Shap, And then semis, they upset Pinnacle. So this team's as hot as ever. Do not look at them as their regular five seed. This team is as real as can get. So we look at Notre Dame, and you and I got the lucky enough to call the game last year from Oceanside and watched Notre Dame play Pinnacle. This will be the third straight state, state championship game for Notre Dame. What can we expect and what players should we be looking for from that Notre Dame team? So Notre Dame, what I think is fast, um, and I think very defensive as well. They're built from their defense. They're built from their net out. Their goalie, Macahon, played every single game this year. Uh, only one loss in the entire year, and that was to Pinnacle back in November. But this team plays from their net out. When you talk about senior D-men, Evan Cobley, Connor White, then they have one of my favorite players to watch, sophomore D-men, Adam Kaplan, who had the assist on the Tyler Posh overtime winner back on Sunday night against Basha. Very defensive game. And then you look at their forwards, and it's even better. Connor Purdue and Reed Gramlich, who's only a junior but plays like he could uh, play juniors tomorrow. He's incredible, so fast, goes to the outside and cuts to the net. Those are uh, the two guys that lead them on offense for and sure. You talked about Desert Vista, and this is a team I, a lot of high school fans maybe weren't expecting in this game. I know the Pinnacle Pioneers are a name that people who follow high school hockey know, um, but Desert Vista deserves to be here. They earned their way here. Can you give us some of the players that lead that team? Absolutely. So Desert Vista kind of had two sides to their season this year. It was before when their travel kids from Bobcats were out traveling, and then when they got them back, they went on a six-game heater um, through the regular season and then, of course, uh, the three games in the playoffs. So names to look out for. Ryan Jim, 92 on DV, has seven goals in the last three wow. games. 
Uh, he had four against Pinnacle in the semifinals. He's been incredible. His line mate, the captain, Danny O'Reilly, uh, 89 on their squad, is even better. Uh, he's one of the best skaters I've seen. Um, and they're so deep. Three, four lines they can just roll out in any situation. On D, you got to look at 19, Kelton Chadwick. Um, he, he skates almost like a forward. He can jump into the play. He pinches in along the wall. Um, he really creates an offensive um, you know, pinpoint for this DV squad. And then on the back end, they have two great goalies, uh, two seniors in Tagger Tamburo and then Aiden Biswanger. Biswanger played in the quarters and the semis, and he was really, really good, really stopped the puck and, and kept rebounds to the corner, which has been a, a problem of his in the past, but he's been really, really good. It's going to be a hard, hard decision for Coach uh, Mark Moynihan to decide on who to start for them. But nine-game win streak, and they're looking to make it 10. Okay, you've been calling games around the Valley, and you've been in most of the rinks in the Valley. This is calling a game in a mullet. What does it mean to you to call this game in this building? Um, so, of course, everyone goes to games as kids. And I went to, of course, Nassau Coliseum. I went to MSG. I went to the Prudential Center in North, uh, New Jersey. I'm from Connecticut. But th this is just, um, you know, it's an honor. It's an honor. It it's everything I would have hoped for. I signed on with Kenny last playoffs, and we did it at Oceanside, and I thought that was the coolest thing of all time. And this year, just th 365 days later, we're in a 5,000-seat arena where the NHL team Coyote plays and the ASU Sun Devils play. I am over the moon excited every single day I wake up with a smile. Well, if you want to catch up on those games, like I said, check out the Asha channel. You can watch the semis. And the quarterfinals where Dylan made the call. Can't wait for Saturday to call this game. We'll see everybody on Saturday night. Tune in. Well, I, I think we've we've done. It's going to be a good game. I want people honestly. If 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 you've got the time on Saturday night, come down to the mullet. Like it's going to be an an atmosphere. These kids deserve to have the feeling like this is the big time because it is. Um, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. That's I can't right. believe I'm going to get Craig out on a Saturday because he's usually <laughs> at home watching Disney Channel. But <laughs> Lifetime, buddy. <laughs> Lifetime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seal award. <laughs> but no, this is going to be good. I'm, I'm excited. And I want to see a good hockey game. I, I, I think that's most important. And, and I am encourage people to go out. I really do. Get, get tickets. Support this. Support Asha. They're taking a big step and a big leap in moving high school hockey forward and getting to the mullet. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game. I am sincerely excited about it. I, I think it's great for high school hockey and honestly, hockey in general in this state. Yeah, it's really awesome. And if you're looking to buy tickets, we have the link below in this video. So click on that link to get your tickets. Like PD said, you can be right on the glass. First come, first serve, but get those tickets and check out Mullet Arena. And if you're looking for more Arizona hockey coverage in general. You can follow us. We cover the Coyotes, the Roadrunners, ASU hockey, all of it. You can follow PHNX Sports wherever you get social media. Subscribe to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. And most importantly, you can follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. We appreciate you all for watching this special edition of the PHNX Coyotes podcast, and we'll see everybody on Saturday.